Hi there, it's Nick Dutch back on the camera again one more time. Hi there, how things are going? Great to be doing a video again. I know I haven't done one for a couple of days, so unfortunately, you know, that's just the way that things have been. So I'll just give you a bit of basic background as to what I've been doing, what I've been getting up to, things that I've been doing basically for myself. First and foremost, I'm um, getting very heavily into healthy cooking and healthy eating because um, because I damn well feel like it. And I've treated myself recently and I've got myself two electric hobs. Using my little gas stove has been great, but... You know, I need to have more hob cooking, so I managed to make myself a wicked stir fry earlier on today. Totally wonderful. My bread making experiments are taking um, a few notches in the right direction. I'm learning how to make shortbread, uh, and that's going to be absolutely great as well because I need to have more snacks during the day. I just need to have like good snack food, and, I, and of course, you know, having something biscuity would be pretty amazing anyway. Now, I promised you to do that. We just I also get that edited and uploaded, but when I did a preview of it. Okay, a preview of the actual, the actual video. Took the SD card out of the camera, shoved it into my little thing about what's it you do for, that sort of thing. Shoved the thing into the computer's USB socket, put it onto the computer, had a quick look at the video itself, and hey presto, the cat was in the picture all the fucking time. Which is a bastard, which means that from your point of view, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to get to see anything. Like when I was doing that Ouija board seance, I was in the zone. And I mean totally in the zone. There was nothing else that was basically distracting me whatsoever. I was focusing on the board, focusing on the messages, and basically it was um, an amazing experience for me personally. But on the other hand, if that was to be turned into a video, I mean, that would look pretty appalling. You know, you'd be just spending all your time staring up my cat's ass, basically. And the very idea of uploading my cat's ass to YouTube, I mean, I'm sure that's going to get a few flags if you get my drift. You know what I mean? You know, cat porn, or what's it, Rule 35 or Rule 34, something like that's going to be applied to a video created by Nick Dutch. And I think that would actually be a pretty sad indictment on the way that the channel has gone, basically, if you get my drift. You know, I don't really want that kind of thing to, to appear. Anyway, someone's left a comment on my channel page uh, inquiring whether I'd read certain books on um, Christian mysticism and Christian occultism because of my recent turn towards Christianity. Well, that's the whole thing about the occult movements. I mean, you, you can't avoid coming across books which are written by Christians for Christians who happen to be occultists in New Ages anyway. Uh, just as if you were reading books on Wicca, you wouldn't be able to avoid coming across some books which are based upon, like, feminism or, you know, the, the idea of... Uh, racial politics somehow getting involved with the whole thing somewhere along the line because that's just you know what the market is about and as far as uh, spiritualism or spiritual occultism in general speaking there's an awful lot out there one of the earlier books I read way 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 back was called Christ Psychotherapy and Magic and in which case it did speak about um, the use of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life in meditation and visualization and also in occult workings as well as building up your own um, symbolical system and on top of that, using it to create things like an auric shield around you uh, and a wide variety of other really cool things. There's even some uh, mention of something akin to servitor work using the archangels because basically the whole thing over overlaps. Everything you read in books by Peter J. Carroll, all of the Chaos Magic books, uh, all of the Golden Dawn books, all of the Witchcraft books, it all overlaps in terms of technique and attitudes and basically um, the style of thinking that you've got to do if you, if you want to learn to do this stuff. Uh, even vaguely properly if you get my drift. So, you know, you, you just can't avoid coming across some Christian writings or whatever. I mean, there's so much contribution that Christianity itself has made to occultism. It's absolutely amazing. And in fact, one would have to say that Christianity is probably like... Um, the godfather or godmother, so to speak, of witchcraft itself, which is totally peculiar because people who are involved in witchcraft are often thoroughly anti-Christian, but they don't actually understand, you know, the roots of where uh, Wicca itself came from. Um, still going through the triumph of the moon. I don't have time to dedicate myself to sitting down, taking notes whilst I'm reading it, and treating it like a, an academic study for a fee university. I just don't have the time for that because I've got to keep myself prepared for you know, a course coming in. I've got to carry on doing YouTube videos. I've got to do my tarot show. There's lots of little things I've got to do. And now I'm doing like Google AdWords advertising for my party service. Um, I've got a few bookings coming up and I've got to try and make sure I'm managing the bids and all the rest of that and make sure I've got money coming in to cover that as well as looking after myself. Okay, so there's quite a few uh, hectic drains upon my time. But what I have learned from that is actually pretty amazing. The, the vast majority of the roots of the modern pagan movement appear to be essentially from Freemasonry, and Freemasonry was of course uh, initially Christian, 
right? It was it, it's essentially a Christian cult, although there are some um, some forms of lodges and some forms of lodge practices which essentially choose to take a more sort of like free form approach and apply ideas which are. Uh, kind of like a parody of paganism thrown in. And in fact, so many things which are currently in Wicca uh, have actually come directly from Freemasonry and have been provided by Freemasonry for people in the witchcraft movement to use. So not only do people who are, you know, practicing dogmatic Wiccans need to really, you know, bow their caps before Christianity as being like the father of everything that they do, uh, but they've also got to start seeing that the way that Wicca has... Uh, has developed has been with great thanks to Freemasonry. One could even argue that to a certain degree the Wicca, if you take it very seriously and very deliberately, is in fact a Freemasonry religion or a Freemasonry cult in its own right. All right, because of you know the use of language, some of the ideas which are present within it, uh, anything from I mean even the circle castings, I think that's got some kind of connection to some forms of Freemasonry activities as well. Uh, I had the great uh, great fortune to actually go into a Freemasonry lodge a little while ago, and I saw a lot of things that were very familiar, from things that you know I'd I'd heard about or I'd experienced through being in the pagan world. So there is a tremendous crossover there, which is very interesting okay uh, so you know you can't escape Christianity I mean we live in Great Britain when essentially well I, I live in Great Britain when so many things have come out of Christianity the best schools and the best universities the universities in which uh, Professor Dawkins goes and talks out about his atheism and militant atheism were basically founded by Christian ph uh, philanthropists, you know, it was money given so that people can get an education and find out about the world and to encourage the study of natural science, including things such as evolution and eventually, of course, abiogenesis and all the rest of that. And that was, you know, the intention laid down by Christians. The best schools we've got in this country, well, a lot of them, are in fact, um, you know, Church of England or Catholic schools. They're, okay, so they're faith schools, or they've been run, or they've been founded by the churches. So there's the academic side of things so for, you know, school level as well as graduate and postgraduate education. That all rests upon the shoulders of Christians. Uh, what else we got? Of course, Freemasonry, which is one of the largest and most uh, philanthropic charitable organizations in the country, uh, also came from Christianity. Also, the various self-help groups which are associated with uh, drink and drug recovery, such as Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. These things come from Christianity. The whole process of the 12-step program is actually the preliminary stages that one should be going through before one becomes a dedicated Christian. Okay, It's purging yourself of all of the negativity, all of the stuff that's been inside you, and teaching yourself how to think about uh, life and your life situation and what your life's purpose is in a much greater way. But of course, these days, I mean, yes, I, I do confess I am actually a recovering alcoholic, and I do spend a lot of my time, well, some of my time in Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. All right. Uh, a lot of the, the, the process is about change and learning and growth. All right. And it's done in a very atheistic way, which I think is really rather interesting. They often use um, the letters G-O-D to stand for the group of drunks, namely the members of the meeting, or to stand for a good orderly direction. So the word God is essentially talking about learning to live an orderly and, and well-mannered or well-fashioned life. Uh, which, again, is very interesting because, you know, I went recently to the Ash Wednesday service at the local church. And this was, this was uh, amazing because if you spend all your time on YouTube and you just think about what people say on YouTube and what all these fundamentalist Christians are saying on YouTube, you'll get the strong impression that Christianity is about you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to think like this, you have to think like that. But the entire service, all right, the entire Ash Wednesday service was not about obey, but was about reflect. All right? Contemplate, think about where you possibly have been going wrong, things about yourself that have not quite been on track, and trying to use ideas present in, of course, the service, in the literature, and the rest of that, to try and improve upon yourself within certain guidelines. So the idea is that you are not Christ-like, you don't have to obey, you have to learn and to grow, and here are some ideals which are to be headed for, which is diametrically opposite 
to what you would see within, let's say, the roundings of Venom Fang X or, you know, uh, some of the other individuals out there, shall we say, who are of certain bents. And, of course, because creationism has become this, like, big thing, they, you know, it is the big bad thing, without the shadow of a doubt. Don't get me wrong there, I do not disagree with you, if that's what you think about it. Because, you know, I personally am not a creationist, I actually reject creationism very strongly, alright? Uh, but creationism has become this really, really big thing that everyone should be focusing their attention upon. And because of that, people then assume that this sort of creationist, fundamentalist, literalist, aggressive, um, you know, the world was literally created in seven days stuff, is what Christianity is. And it ignores all of the other aspects, which is to do with think carefully about who you are, what you are, where you are, where you've come from, uh, what you are becoming, and the various forces inside you as a human individual, which has basically made you like that. So it's a completely different attitude than what is actually out there. So, you know, I'm actually getting involved. Now, I will say this. There are some churches which I've heard of, because I noticed a lovely young lady uh, who's been to some of the other churches in the area, and they are political, they are extreme. When Barack Obama got uh, elected as, um, as president of America, apparently in one particular church there was, uh, there was photographs of Barack Obama being handed out, and everyone was being instructed and told they had to pray for him. Now I think that that's not only a question of like church and state blending, but also the churches in this country, in the United Kingdom, paying lip service to the government in another country, namely the USA, which is even worse. All right, it's bad enough having you know church and state um, issues of uh, of control within the United Kingdom, but also if it's sort of like spreading overseas in that particular way, you know, there's, there, there can be some bad things basically happening there. And, and I, didn't, I, I didn't like that at all. So there are bad churches in this area. There are also, well, there's always going to be some who are literalists. And there's some people who I used to know who regarded themselves as being Christians. And they were saying that there was like one preacher who had like a problem with his tongue. And he was screaming from the pulpit that this was because the devil was trying to stop him from saying his sermon and giving his ministry. Well, what a load of rubbish. You know, I mean, basically, this preacher, you know, hadn't looked after his health and had probably bitten his own tongue. And that's what probably really happened. And he was trying to use that as an excuse to be able to say something to terrify the poxy pathetic little superstitious people in the audience to obey and to listen to him, which I think is absolutely atrocious. Completely atrocious. You know, you sh people shouldn't be doing that. And in the part of the world where I used to live, the f species of Christianity they had there was something which was so far to the political right. I mean, they were praying hatred in the church. I mean, good God. I mean, it was, oh my word. You know, so essentially the, the, the title of Christian, whatever the fuck it means, okay, is not some kind of qualification it doesn't mean that the person with this title has to be this, has to be that, has to be the other. Uh, you know, a person who is a Christian could be fucking anything on the face of the planet. Twisted, mentally ill, distorted, um, anything. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything. I, I, in my humble opinion, what, it's, what it could mean would be a position of humility to be able to say, you know, I know that I'm stressed and I know that there's things wrong with me and I'm choosing to do, live this style of life because it's going to do me some good. And in my particular case, it's because I'm, I'm stressed, I need structure, you know, I, I get the hassle down the phone every single day, which is a job I love, but on the other hand, it's a job that's stressful. And, you know, who doesn't need to have a bit of moral support, especially when you're doing a uh, particular job which some people regard as being rather immoral. I mean, I would rather get myself some, you know, good psychological guidance, you know, working up here so I can do what's right. I had a client recently who um, asked me about her dog that had gone missing, and I said, well, I'm not going to charge you for this because I won't be able to help you. You know, I'm, I'm not the kind of person who would actually want to do something immoral. I've got a good moral background inside me already. I want to keep that. I want to hang on to that, and I don't want to lose that. Uh, and I also don't want to just, like, you know you know, lose the plot or go basically down down the other path, down the other way, and start running my affairs in an inappropriate manner. So is this to do with brainwashing? Am I deliberately getting myself brainwashed? 
no, I really am not getting myself brainwashed because I still reserve the right to think. As I say, you know, the, the church is full of people of different mindsets and different attitudes, and I will have my own. Right? And no one will, can, should, or could take that away from me. And I'll make sure that's the case, you know, because like I'm old enough and I'm strong enough to be able to turn around and just swear at people until I'm blue in the face and they are sweating and shaking in their seat if they choose to mess with me. You know, that's that's what I, that's what I'm about. I look after myself and I know what it means to, to basically look after yourself. And it's hard. Uh, so to the most part I will try and avoid conflict, but if I can't then basically, you know, I'm Boom, you know, I'm there. I'm in the, you know, I'm going to fucking have a go at stuff. On yet another note, I hear that Thunderfoot has been um, discrediting himself by proving that atheists aren't rational. There can be all kinds of different things and have all kinds of different mentalities. And basically being an atheist is not necessarily a qualification of a quality of person. Hmm. Maybe that's just the same as a religious person. Or maybe we can take these um, definitions, throw them aside, and just call people people. And some people are complete arseholes, and some people are less arseholes, or less arseholy, maybe. Alright? Some people are fuck-ups, some people are fuck-ups who are getting better, some people aren't fuck-ups, but they've got a few things wrong with them. Most people have got some little issues here and there. I mean... <laughs> Chill, and, and what is this damn religious war, religious versus, versus atheist war about anyway? Yeah, I mean, I agree that, you know, as far as the abortion debate, I know where I stand there, you know, it, it should all be up to the woman, it's her choice, and it shouldn't be up to um, the state, it shouldn't be up to a religious group, it shouldn't at all, you know. It's also bloody peculiar that these, um, you know, extreme American... Uh, you know, Christians who are supposed to be following the path of Jesus, they take stuff from the Old Testament, they don't realize the context in which it was written, they don't realize that some of it was like the battle hymns and battle stories of a tiny little tribe that was just a bunch of hill-fighting mercenaries who had to try and find ways of surviving, all right? You know, that's, that's what a lot of the Old Testament is about. It's like, it's battle songs and battle stories and people talking about well, doing whatever it is, is they can in order to be able to survive. And when they have a victory, then hey, you know, might as well say that's God's work because essentially it seems so impossible the tiny little tribe could have done that well. <clears throat> so, you know, you got to see this stuff in perspective. And there's gonna, there are so many people out there who are going to distort Christianity. There's so many people out there who are going to distort atheism. So many people out there who are going to distort Islam. And of course, we're on the internet. And you know what the internet's about? It's about people just talking. And some people use it for political purposes, like Alex Jones. <laughs> All right, David Icke. <laughs> All right, don't like him. Don't like him. Of course, I can forgive them in my heart, but on the other hand, I can still choose to not like them if I bloody well want to. People like Thunderfoot. Oh God. You know, I mean, there was a time when everyone thought he was beyond reproach. And now he just demonstrated himself that he's just uh, an exhibitionist lunatic loser of, uh, of a YouTube user who's uh, just using disingenuous tactics to try and win people over. And, you know, I, I think that that is absolutely, completely, and utterly abhorrent. And if he stands for reason, he should be reason able or able to reason. And I don't think he's actually got the ability to reason. As far as living in the age of reason is concerned, that also could not live in the age of reason if it was made out of bricks, had a wonderful front door, had all the mod comms fitted, had infinite quantities of electricity, gas, central heating, uh, and, you know, he was given um, a million dollar a day income just to live in it. You know, as far as, you know, I've said this before, you know, the, the title that a religious person has is no qualification, all right? It's not a mark of quality of person. It's just a kind of category of some particular stories that they accept. And they can accept it on a lot of different levels and a lot of different ways. Getting rid of religion is a bad thing. Attacking fundamentalism, attacking extremism, attacking literalism, 
that's a good thing. But the contemplative process or procedure of being religious, that should be encouraged, not got rid of. Anyway, just a bit of a long-winded rant for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I bid you good fortune. God bless. Keep cool. Don't worry. Don't let the bastards grind you down. And I will speak to you again very, very soon.